that that sets the tone for how our agencies work. And whether your agency is one year old, 10 years old, or 100 years old, the key benchmark for success is the quality of person who's being appointed to head those institutions. And they can be people of different personality, different backgrounds, but it is their judgment, it is their knowledge, it is their vision that has so much to do with whether our institutions succeed or not. And there is an enormous, almost infinite dif dis difference between an individual who simply takes the job to have the job and someone who takes the job to do something with the job, who has a vision about where one wants to go and build the organization. You can't get a paper published if the theme of your paper is leadership is important because in a way it is a very pedestrian observation. That's not high theory. But to watch our organizations over time and to ask what makes for a good system, there's no judgment that a jurisdiction makes over time that is more critical. And I look, for example, at the success of the jurisdictions that I regard as being great successes. I'll pick one among the member states, the United Kingdom. The decision over the past 10 years to select people such as John Vickers and John Fingleton to be the heads of the Office of Fair Trading is a powerful signal to the rest of the world. The rest of the authorities raise their game because they see that commitment of skill and capacity to build those agencies. Another consideration I'll mention is the development of an effective internal structure. A key trend that we're seeing in many agencies is to put economists in a separate operating unit. Yes, they continue to collaborate with case handlers and the lawyers on the case handling team, but they provide an independent source of judgment to top leadership by formulating in many instances their own recommendations with a reporting line that goes right to the top of the agency. I look at the bold experiment that the Euro Com European Commission undertook in the past decade, where in the face of several rebukes and merger cases, there was a deep process of introspection to say, how can we set the framework of our internal operations to improve quality control? And the creation of the chief economist team and the three outstanding individuals who've headed that office has had a great deal to do, I think, in taking an already superior institution and making it still better. A further question by which we can measure progress over time is the relationship of the agency to the political process. It's often said that the agency should be independent, and by that I mean when it exercises critical decisions about whom to prosecute, whether to accept the resolution of a case, when to proceed with a case, it does that without interference from the political branches of the government. But that doesn't mean that it is isolated from the political process. To be completely isolated from the parliament, other ministries, is to be like one of those islands out in the archipelago off the coast. It is easy to sail around you, to ignore you. And there's a huge difference between iso being isolation, which means no capacity to influence key decisions about matters such as state aids in the European Union, subsidies in other jurisdictions, bailout measures in the face of a financial crisis. There has to be some link to the political process, not only to be effective, but also to be accountable to those who ultimately commit resources to what we do and to resist pressure that deals with these critical decisions about exercising the remarkable powers that we have, but also to be linked to the political process to have an effective role. One of my academic colleagues says that it's very much like the relationship of the earth to the sun. You want it to be far enough away that it is not burned to a crisp, and happily we are, but not so far away that it is frozen out of critical decisions that affect the economy. I've already touched upon the critical uh, role of human capital, that is, how do we measure the effectiveness of a system over time? Certainly, the role of leadership that I've just mentioned, the key role that new leadership played in resetting the Australian system with Alan Fells 
in the 1990s, South Africa in the late 1990s with David Lewis, with Menzi Semelani, um, and the continuing commitment to do well. What we've seen in a number of jurisdictions is a trajectory that goes straight up, but just as quickly straight down, where you have a single initial charismatic leader, but you don't have continued follow-up over time and everything becomes hinged to the success of the single charismatic leader. But once that person steps off the stage, there's a tendency for many new institutions simply to deflate very quickly. But at least to have a good start is better than having a demonstrably bad start from which one does not, uh, does not recover. I would say the trajectory that we've seen in a number of jurisdictions that has been successful has been a relatively slower upward slope, not a 90 degree ascent, something more like a 45 degree line where you see gradual accumulations of skill and talent over time, where the agency builds the reputation both for top leadership and for its professional staff as being a place that is technically proficient and astute in selecting projects that promote growth and, and economic <coughs> development. Another characteristic to look at is how well the agency sets priorities and matches priorities to capability. Setting priorities does not mean simply doing what you did last year and then doing it again in the year after. It's making continuous decisions about what's important in the economy. Sometimes there are external action forcing mechanisms that shape the agenda, but to a large extent our agencies have discretion to choose what to do. And a critical element of exercising that authority is to have a conscious plan by which we decide what are the most serious problems that we can likely apply our, our, our powers to and to go about doing that. But at each step of the process to make sure that our commitments don't up, outrun our capabilities. Thus, there's a great premium as part of building that good institution over the decades in building capability. If you ask me what a competition agency ought to do, I'm going to ask you who is performing. And I've shared with Boris and a couple of others the story that comes from my time as a law student in New York City where I was a boarder in a house and my landlady invited the head of the Metropolitan Opera's uh, orchestra, the head of the music program, to perform. And we asked him, how do you decide what to do? And his answer is, it all depends on who's playing. There's some programs for which lots of tenors and sopranos can sing the key parts. There are other compositions for which there are a handful of vocal cords in the world that can do them well. And if you can't get those vocal cords to show up to perform, don't do those operas. It all depends on who's playing. If you ask me what a competition agency ought to do, I'll ask the same question, who's playing? And this points to the critical responsibility of agencies, not just to be measured by how many individual things they're turning out every, every year, but how well are they building the capacity of the agency to do well. The last thing I want to emphasize is what Ellen Fells calls co-producers. These are institutions outside the agency. Why is this so important? In most jurisdictions, we are given virtually unlimited demands from the political process about what we should do and very limited resources to accomplish them. And indeed, the grim reality that many of us face now is that the resources are going down. The Office of Fair Trading has seen its resources fall by 30% in the last two years. Ireland, 40% in the last three years. And next year, before our Congress, we face the possibility that we will be asked to give back 10% of our existing budget which literally means tearing pages out of our personnel directory and laying people off. In that setting, the demands to do good work will not become weaker. They will remain or become stronger. And that means that it's important to form alliances with institutions outside of our own boundaries to improve. So a way to measure how our agencies are doing are, what kinds of links do you have with research institutions in the country or in the region to elicit research that improves your performance and provides the pipeline of talent to assist you in doing your work. About 10% of our capacity to work at my agency comes in the form of unpaid student interns who work for us. 
We have relationships with universities in all the cities in which we operate. But 10% of our capacity comes from these students, bright young people who are trying to audition for jobs, but also to build a foundation for working in other settings later on. It's one way that we greatly augment our nominal budget in doing our work. The one other I'll mention here are professional societies. That is the crucial role of building links to the legal profession as both a way to distribute information about what we do to the business community, but to get feedback about how well we were doing, are doing. And to have that be not a passive relationship or a credulous relationship, but to be one that sometimes features tension. But it is the continuous tension, discussion, and debate that makes us bigger, better in what we do. And certainly one of the greatest improvements for the agencies in my country is that we have gradually put aside the thin-skinned attitude that we will not participate in events where we are criticized. But we will seek those out as a way of being better. I'm not sure we're all the way there. But there's a growing recognition that if you are afraid that your ideas cannot withstand debate, maybe it's time to get some new ideas. So how to assess our work over time? I would say that for every jurisdiction, it is a healthy exercise every five years to ask, how are we doing? What are our goals? What is our human capability? What is the structure of our agencies? To look at trends in the work that we're doing and to try to measure in a general way how we're improving economic performance, the big question that faces all of us. And I would start to make decisive judgments about the agency about 20 years out. That's about how long it takes to set a number of foundations in place. And this is where a comparative study can be a great ally in doing this kind of work. International networks, the larger ones, the regional ones, are an excellent way to absorb know-how about superior techniques. The tappet of publishing better data sets and information about what we do is a way to promote effective evaluation outside and to develop a conscious process for evaluation to measure both our substantive outcomes and our, our individual results. And what you learn over time is that this becomes, this element of culture, this element of self-assessment and criticism becomes critical. And the danger for an older agency is that you suffer the same pathologies that beset older people. Rigidity, inflexibility, memory loss, all of the things that tend to cripple ultimately individuals. And renewal becomes more and more difficult because as one of my colleagues puts the point, it's what you learn after you know it all that really counts. And that is the spirit of self-assessment and inquiry that tends to make for an effective agency. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bill.